The Gibson SD has been my favorite electric guitar since I bought one from Long McQuaid in Winnipeg in 2001. It looked cool, it felt right, and it was 1500 bucks, which was right about the absolute horizon of what I convinced myself that I could afford at the time. It was the first time I ever bought a new guitar, and I still have it to this very day. Tons and tons of guitar players and bands I liked played SGs, as well as a few others that I appreciated from afar. The Gibson SG was introduced in 1961 or late 1960, depending on what website you ask. It's Gibson's best-selling guitar of all time and sold more than 6,000 units a year from 61 to 63. I wasn't able to find the current total units sold, but considering that Gibson sold over 150,000 guitars in 2017 alone, it's got to be in the millions by now. The original SG was called the Les Paul SG and was designed and created by Ted McCarthy and Larry Allers. Larry was a foreman of the woodworking area, and at some point he got promoted to an engineer. Ted, on the other hand, I guess was just a rad dude in the right place at the right time. Way to go, Ted. Les Paul himself wasn't a fan of the SG, seemingly mainly due to the flimsy neck. The simpler body reduced the production cost, and the double cutaway made the higher frets more accessible. However, it also upped the chances of a whoops moment ruining your night and you having a two-piece guitar. It was at one point advertised as the fastest neck in the world, which to me seems more dependent on the operator. Anyways, Paul didn't buy into this. His name was taken off the guitar in 1962 and it became known as the SG Standard. SG stands for solid guitar, which I'm guessing was an inside joke, since SGs are famous for being just the opposite. 61 or 62 SGs unrepaired are super duper rare, and my own broke in 2005 where the neck meets the body. That one was probably more on me. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown it as high, or maybe I should have done a better job at catching it. Gibson's most sustainable numbering system was launched in 1977. It was an eight-digit number, the first and fifth representing the year, and the three digits between representing the day of manufacture. The digits six to eight indicated a sequence number, which I never found out what that meant. Gibson currently has 18 different models of SG for order on their website. Other sites have listed over 40 different models from over the years. My guess is it's probably even higher than that right now. Gibson's still putting out new models of the SG, like the 2020 Tony Iommi Signature SG, nicknamed The Monkey. The heavily modded guitar was Iommi's fave in the Sabbath years, and a limited run of 50 guitars will include 25 right-handed ones, even though the original was a lefty. Nothing was overlooked. It has the same pickups, tailpiece, even the little monkey sticker. A guitar is just a guitar in most cases. I mean, I like the beat-up tailors I've been touring with for the last 10 years, but if anything happened to them, I assumed I would just get new ones. Why is it then that I've held on to this guitar for almost 20 years? I've tried to sell it a few times when I was in need of money, but I always overpriced it, knowing that no one would ever pay that much money for what it is. I spent so much time playing this thing, I guess it kind of feels like it's a part of me. That if I ever did get rid of it, I've officially closed the door on that part of my life. The things that mattered so much at one time are finally rendered obsolete. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs>